infant of diabetic mother. Women with diabetes in pregnancy, type 1, type 2, and gestational, are all at increased risk for adverse pregnancy outcomes. Adequate glycemic control before and during pregnancy is crucial for improving outcome. Most infants born to diabetic mothers are large for gestational age. If the diabetes is complicated by vascular disease, infants may have growth restriction especially those born after 37 weeks gestation. The neonatal mortality rate is over five times that of infants of non-diabetic mothers. Problems of infants of diabetic mothers 1. Birth trauma 2. Congenital malformations 3. Cardiac septal hypertrophy and myocardiopathy 4. Renal vein thrombosis 5. Polycetemia 6. Surfactant deficiency related respiratory distress syndrome 7. Hyperbilirubinemia 8. Hypomagnesemia 9. Hypocalcemia 10. Hypoglycemia 11. Birth asphyxia Diabetic mothers have a high incidence of polyhydramnios High fetal mortality rate at all gestational ages, especially after 32 week Chronic hypertension Pyelonephritis Preeclampsia Preterm labor Pathophysiology Maternal hyperglycemia causes Fetal hyperglycemia and increase the fetal pancreatic response leads to fetal hyperinsulinemia fetal hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia cause increased hepatic glucose uptake and glycogen synthesis accelerated lipogenesis and protein synthesis related pathologic findings are Hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the pancreatic underscorylate cells. Increased weight of the placenta and infant organs. Myocardial hypertrophy. Except for the brain. Hyperinsulinism and hyperglycemia produce. Fetal acidosis, which may result in an increased rate of stillbirth. Separation of the placenta at birth suddenly interrupts glucose infusion into the neonate without a proportional effect on the hyperinsulinism and hypoglycemia and poor lipolysis develop during the first hour after birth. Clinical Manifestations Infants tend to be large and plump. As a result of increased body fat and big viscera, they have puffy, plethoric fasciae. These infants may be of normal or low birth weight, particularly if delivered before term or the mother has associated vascular disease. Hypoglycemia develops in 25 underscore 50 percent of infants of diabetic mothers, occurs in 15 underscore 25 percent of infants of gestational diabetes mothers, and only small percentage of these infants become symptomatic. The nadir in an infant's blood glucose concentration is usually reached between 1 to 3 hours after birth. And spontaneous recovery may begin by 4 underscore 6 hours after birth. The infants tend to be jumpy, tremulous, and hyperexcitable during the first 3 days of life. Although hypotonia, lethargy, and poor sucking may also occur. Tachania Develops in many infants of diabetic mothers during the first two days of life. Infants of diabetic mothers have a higher incidence of respiratory distress syndrome. May be related to the antagonistic effect of insulin on stimulation of surfactant synthesis by cortisol. Cardiomegaly is common in 30% of IDM. Congenital heart disease is more common in infants of diabetic mothers. Heart failure occurs in 5 underscore 10 percent of infants of diabetic mothers. Asymmetric septal hypertrophy may occur. And inotropic agents worsen the obstruction and so are contraindicated. Birth trauma is also a common sequel of fetal macrosomia.
neurologic development and ossification centers tend to be immature and correlate with brain size, which is not increased, and gestational age rather than total body weight. Hyperbilirubinemia, polycytemia, and renal vein thrombosis are of increased incidence, and the latter should be suspected in infants with a flank mass, hematuria, and thrombocytopenia. Congenital anomalies, increased incidence of the incidence of congenital anomalies is 3x. Cardiac malformations, VSD, ASD, TGA, coarctation of the aorta, others. Lumbosacral agents, neural tube defects, hydronephrosis, other renal anomalies. Treatment. Treatment should be initiated before birth by frequent prenatal evaluation of all pregnant women with overt or gestational diabetes. And by planning the delivery of these infants in hospitals where expert obstetric and pediatric care is available. Reconception glucose control reduces the risk of anomalies and other adverse outcomes. Glucose control during labor reduces the incidence of neonatal hypoglycemia regardless of size. All infants of diabetic mothers should initially receive intensive care. Hypoglycemia is defined. Plasma glucose concentrations of 30 to 45 mg slash DL in term infants. 25 to 40 mg slash DL in whole blood. The best treatment of mild transient neonatal low glucose concentrations is early feeding. Whether the neonate is an IDM or not, a plasma or blood glucose level of less than 20 or 25 mg slash DL respectively requires intravenous glucose administration unless the infant readily takes a good feeding and remains normal glycemic. Asymptomatic infants should have a blood glucose determination within one hour of birth and then every hour for the next six underscore eight hours. If clinically well and normal glycemic, oral or gavage feeding with breast milk or formula should be started as soon as possible and continued at 3 hours. Intervals If any question arises about an infant's ability to tolerate oral feeding, the feeding should be discontinued, and glucose given by peripheral intravenous infusion at a rate of 4 underscore 8 mg slash kg per minute. Hypoglycemia should be treated, even in asymptomatic infants, by frequent feeding and or intravenous infusion of glucose. Bolus injections of hypertonic glucose should be avoided, because they may cause further hyperinsulinemia and potentially produce rebound hypoglycemia. Hypocalcemia Calcium concentration in the immediate newborn period decreases in all newborn infants. Hypocalcemia is usually defined as a total serum concentration less than 7 mg slash DL. The clinical signs of hypocalcemia and hypocalcemia tetany include a high-pitched cry, jitteriness tremulousness, seizures, apnea, muscle twitching, laryngospasm, cavostic sign, facial muscle spasm when the side of the face over the seventh nerve, is tapped. Trusal sign, carpopital spasm induced by partial inflation of a blood pressure cuff. The last two signs are rare in the immediate newborn period. Hypocalcemia tends to occur at two different times in the neonatal period. Early onset hypocalcemia occurs in the first two days of life and is associated with Prematurity, maternal diabetes, asphyxia, rarely maternal hypoparathyroidism, late onset hypocalcemia, occurs at approximately 7 underscore 10 days and is observed in infants receiving modified cow's milk rather than infant formula, high phosphorus intake, in infants with hypoparathyroidism, in infants with hypomagnesemia. Mothers with vitamin D deficiency. Treatment of hypocalcemia. 
a oral calcium therapy. The oral administration of calcium salts is a preferred method of treatment for chronic forms of hypocalcemia resulting from hypoparathyroidism but is rarely used in early onset hypocalcemia. Calcium in the form of calcium gluconate can be given as a diluted solution or added to formula feeding several times a day. If a 10% solution of calcium gluconate is used, the dose is 5 underscore 10 milliliters slash kg slash day given in divided doses, every 4 to 6 hours. B. Intravenous Calcium Therapy Intravenous calcium therapy is usually needed for infants with symptomatic hypocalcemia. Several precautions must be observed when calcium gluconate is given intravenously, as the infusion must be given slowly so that there is no sudden increase in calcium concentration of blood entering the right atrium, which could cause severe bradycardia and even cardiac arrest.